You're watching The Advocate on Plus TV. And yes, Liboros and Ekene are right. I have a question for you. Are we bringing up citizens or slaves? Many have said the resilience of Nigerians and our capacity to accept anything meted out to us by our leaders is that of this world. It is even said that if you push Nigerians to the world, instead of fighting back, they will simply dig a hole in the wall and make the most of the situation with a smiling face, of course. Our docility as a people has been much talked about, and those who lead us know very well about this docility and have used it to their advantage. What kind of people are we? And why are we ready to smile, in, even in the face of things that have made citizens of many other countries pour out on the streets in vexation? Many have put it down to our disunity. Is that really the case? Or is there much more to it? It's our docility as a result of our upbringing. Our parents bringing up children that are taught that having a voice and making the minds are a necessary part of life. How many parents allow their children to have a say in what goes on in the house? How many allow their children to question their authority and make demands on them? Isn't the child who never says anything and does all he or she is told seen as the ideal child, while the one who questions is assertive and makes the man seen as a stubborn child and punished? Hmm. Haven't children been punished just for speaking up and demanding to be heard. How many times did, you, did we hear the saying that elders are always right? And that even when elders are speaking, a child should not speak. It is seen as a sacrilege for a child to even contradict an adult, even when the adult is so obviously wrong. The schools aren't different. The same demand is made on the child to obey given authority without any complaint nor demands made by the, by the child. Being punished for being a stubborn child has led to adults that have simply replaced the parents and adults in their life with those they voted to serve them. And it is time we parents really begin to look at ourselves and ask ourselves whether we are bringing up citizens who understand the, their role in society and make demands or we are bringing up slaves who would accept anything meted out to them because being good is never about speaking up or having a voice. This is a question we really need to ask ourselves. Ugemoto, uh, uh, Now, well, okay. the bond is strong. We are <laughs> part <laughs> of the Was that good? We are, yes. we're, we were, we're, we're wrapped. That's why we're, we're listening, letting it marinate. Please, David. Spot on. Spot on. I don't think it's possible to agree any more with Aisha than I already do. Speaking as someone who was mm. the ultimate stubborn child, I know exactly what that means, you know, because I also grew up in proximity with those who were ideal children. And in our, in our adulthood, it's very easy to see who has turned out into what. So the stubborn child has turned into the person who has no problem asking questions. Okay, you are the stubborn child? Very much so. Oh, really? I have no problem asking questions of people who don't want to be asked questions. Okay. While those who grew up around me, who, knew, who learned how to shrink themselves in the presence of authority, are still that way. Okay. But did your parents encourage that, or you're just the way you were? Oh, well, my parents absolutely did not encourage that. Okay. So I, <laughs> innate. I, I didn't have a fun time growing up. Okay. But in many ways, that, that thick skin is kind of what makes me the person that I am now. So obviously, this isn't to say that you know, being a, being a strong-headed, you know, strong aggressive person necessarily is a good thing on its own, in itself. Mm -hmm. It has its usefulness if it's challenged, if it's channeled the right way. And mm. that's why I agree with what, with what Aisha said. In this part of the world, we have this very damaging idea that children are, children are items. For so, display. Yeah, so a child is basically just an extension of the parents mm. as against a fully formed human being in their that own right. That can think independently. So, so we, we fail to understand that when a child is six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, we, you know, we don't really see them as anything. Their, their opinions, you know, they don't really know that much. But we fail to understand that what they are picking up from their environment at that time, it's very rare for them to lose it. 
the way we knew people when they were 12, 13 years old, more often than not, it's still the same way they are now. People don't really change that dramatically. So if at that early age, you don't teach children that it's okay to contradict someone who's in authority, it's okay to look at someone who's older than you and ask why. It's okay that when someone tells you, sit down, you ask the person why. You know, we, we don't do that in this part of the world. We, do, we say, trust and obey. The person is older than you, the person is in a position <laughs> yeah. of authority, that's yeah. it. I, 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 I can, um, I, I, I completely agree with uh, my shadow, that's why I said, um, um, like means, uh, it's <laughs> the truth that you're speaking, and, uh, and and so I practically, you know, I was a rebel. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, uh, yes. All the rebels on this panel. Yes, I, I was. I was a rebel, um, <laughs> and at some point I had to kneel down all through. But I am happy, um, having grown up with my uncle. I am happy that I went through the process I went through. Um, but now times have changed. You know, having gone through that process, I have a different relationship with my children. We bond, we, we relate like guys. Mm. Uh, and then, uh, but it's a cultural thing. Yeah. It's this cultural hangover of the king can do no wrong. And then also we carry it over to political life. I remember in a class in the um, University of Benin, I, I wasn't in university, I was in Ekpo, and I went to attend a, a, a lecture with my friend, and then I contradicted the lecturer. Because I had read the nine before, I read that topic the nine before. And then when she was talking and then she gave his stance, he cited the case and I said, no, I have a contrary opinion. I read Bernard and Huggins and then he said a different, Kolawole and Abato. And she said, who are you to have a contrary opinion to have my opinion? For I us to bring up leaders, you have to actually teach them to be yeah. kings. I think that um, Aisha's advocacy is spot on about you know, and, and you hear that a little bit in my own advocacy because kind of, there's a link between that. In fact, all of today's. Yeah, but, we're but, flowing. Yeah, we're, there's, there's a lot of flow. <laughs> but I think um, to, to take on from what, to sort of wrap it from what uh, Liberos was saying is there's a necessity, and I think we need to agree that we need, in building a new society, in building a new system, we need to realize that we as parents, we have a, a responsibility to, to teach our children that to we have are in a this, voice. To have a voice. The question. Um, you know, um, and, and that voice may not necessarily be the kind of David's voice that is, is you know, was, as a child was always the one breaking rules and boundaries. Mm -hmm. But we have a necessity, we have a responsibility rather to teach them that you, you, you have, you're part of the society and you should ask questions. And the way we teach, even in secondary school, even the system of learning should follow that, that line. Where, because if you, if you went to school in a different climate, students and pupils are allowed to think, and to th not just to cram, but yeah. to think and yeah. to reflect and to, and to fashion things. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, 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 that, that, that's I mean, I think I'll, really... I'll concur with everybody. Aisha, thank you for bringing it home, literally. I can just come in um, for, for a little bit. Okay. You know, this relates to what is happening today in our society. A lot of people are still being punished. Like what he said, you know, speaking up in, in school and contra in the class and contradicting his lecturer. And look, the way she reacted is the way people are still reacting. And then, you know, you, you asked the question earlier on why are the wrong set of people getting into position? They are being rewarded for looking the other way when looks are going on, for, for, for supporting the wrong thing. Those who speak out, who stand against the wrong thing that is being done, you find that they are punished, they are pushed out of the way. I have kids. My youngest child is 18. She's going to be 19 uh, in, in December. And what I said to my children always, right from when they were kids, that look, I'm not always right. And they don't have to obey me if they are not uh, sure and they are not, uh, they are not, they don't accept what I'm talking about. The only thing I said to them is the only thing you obey is God. For me as a parent, I don't owe you. We, we, we will have a discussion. And I find a lot of people, a lot of parents are not able to do this. Let me just give you a, an example before I round up. Normally, if I see a child, before I hug the child, I always ask the child, please, can I hug you? And sometimes the kids say no, and I'm fine with it. And you see their parents trying to force them. And I always say to the parents, no, you can't force them. You must allow them to have their own safe space, yeah. where if they don't feel like hugging me, it's, it's absolutely right. And they have a right to say, look, Aisha, I don't want to hug you. And it's perfectly OK. Yeah. Uh, until we begin to do that, we continue to have space to sit down and accept anything being done by the leaders that we have put in.
Yeah, and I think um, because I feel just very quickly, because I think we're out of time, because I feel we're a largely dysfunctional society, I still feel that a lot of the mop up has to still occur in now institutional spaces. So, yeah, that's and like, true. for example, where I work, I'm still intrigued because uh, the guy who heads this place, he, sometimes he allows a certain kind of, um, do you say, reaction. And even I'm stunned by the amount of um, vociferousness he takes. He, you know, people can talk back to him anyhow, and he'll, he'll take it. And I'm like, wow, you know, I'm impressed. But maybe I'm just not used to that. And I think we need to encourage that kind of thing. And I like that kind of leadership, even though some people say he, he allows it too much. But I'd rather too much than too little. So we, we have a lot of work to do. And I'm just saying, where we miss it in the home, let's be ready for it in the classroom. Let's be ready for it in the workplaces. Let's not continue the system the way it is. Pay rise for you. Pay rise for you. <laughs> <laughs> Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.